Hey boys, welcome back to NRL Supercoach 2018 and it's going to be the round two recap here. And we had a much better, much better round. As you can see, we scored 1,149, which is a good score. Like, honestly, previous seasons I've always thought over 1,000, that's a solid score. In the 1,100s, 1,200s, that's, you know, that's a really good score. But there was still a couple of plays that just screwed us over and a couple of misplays by us that uh, held us back from getting a incredible score because we had some of the highest scoring players in uh, <clears throat> for the round on our team. Like, honestly, I feel like I have like a really, really strong team. The first round was an absolute killer, but uh, the second round showed the potential, but still a couple of things that needs to be fixed, but we'll have a look here. Uh, so first off, one of the mistakes, and a mistake that pretty much everybody made, was uh, Cameron Smith was the captain, and I don't know what the hell is going on with the Tigers. The Tigers apparently are uh, like the best defensive team in the in the league this year, and the Storm, they didn't play well, in, in my opinion. I mean, the Tigers were good, don't get me wrong, but I still feel like the Storm were... They weren't that good, and Cameron Smith also didn't play very well. He only got 44, so I had him as captain, and that only netted me 88 points, which is not good enough, really. It's pretty piss poor. Um, <clears throat> next up, Matt Lodge, 47. Uh, very happy with that. Honestly, if Lodge gets 40 to 50, job well done, honestly. Uh, Sam Burge is 45. Again, pretty underperforming, but I sort of... I'm not too disappointed with this one because the Rabbitohs were playing again in like really, really hot conditions. Sam Burgess didn't play big minutes. I mean, he played a fair bit, but um, it was just, again, it was like such hot conditions. And um, yeah, the, the forwards, none of the forwards on either side really scored a heap of points. So yeah, Burgess, he'll, he'll, I, I, I hope he bounces back, honestly, but uh We'll see. Uh, Tohu Harris, 71. I'm very happy with this pickup because Harris wasn't the most expensive uh, back rower, but I'm very happy I picked him up. He's playing very good. Uh, Robbie Rocco, 27. Obviously not great. Um, we did bring him in last week for Takeaho. Yeah, we bought him in for Takeaho, which obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously if you look at the scores, I think Takeaho scored about 50 so we did lose, but uh, I'm not too disappointed. Rocco, they were coming up against a storm, and it was mainly just a defensive grind from both teams. And Rocco did miss like eight tackles, um, but hopefully he can bounce back. Uh, this is where we start to get pretty good. Uh, Jake Dubovic, 115 points, and he didn't even he didn't even play like the last <clears throat> like 10, 15 minutes of the game. He scored a try. He got a try assist with a nice little offload, and yeah, he killed it. Jonathan Thurston, 110 points. I I, I was so tempted to put Thurston as the captain um, because they were taking on the Broncos. It's always an awesome game, Broncos-Cowboys, and I thought, Thurston, he's going to play well, but I didn't do it. He got 110 points. Obviously, still very happy with that. The next one, my God, Mitchell Moses. Oh, I cannot believe this. Mitchell Moses, the first week, he got 30, I think he got 30, right? He looked really good until he got concussed. He was off for like 10, 15 minutes, and then he got sin binned. He still got 30 points, and I thought, I think Moses could be a really good buy this year. Second round, he gets six points. I actually didn't watch all of the... Um, <clears throat> Actually, no, I did watch most of the game. Yeah, the Manly... Yeah, I watched most of this game, but I didn't... Yeah, obviously Manly were just destroying Parramatta. Um, and Moses, once again, got sin binned, which... Oh, my God. Mitchell Moses, he's actually killing me in this uh, in this super coach year. And there's a couple of decisions to make, and I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. But uh, Moses, six points. Obviously, the biggest letdown. Uh, Latrell Mitchell, 43. <laughs> I can... He's another big decision to make. I'm not sure what to do with Latrell Mitchell. <clears throat> Obviously, it's not very good. Um, yeah, he just doesn't get involved. He's so he's so dangerous, and he can just break through tackles and 
offload at will, but he just doesn't touch the ball. It's 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 so frustrating. Um, Peter Hiku, 85, just absolutely killed it. Um, a very good pickup. Richie Kenna, who I bought in. Um, who did I trade out for Kenna? I can't actually remember. I traded out one of... Oh, I think I traded out Zach Lomax last week. So I traded... Um, <clears throat> I traded Takeaho for Rocco. And that, that freed up like a lot of money. And then I was able to upgrade... Um, Zach Lomax to Kenna, and Kenna, like, he's not a super cheap player, he's like 230, but he scored 58 points again, so he's going to skyrocket in price, uh, Jared Croker, 70, you know, like, I said in the first round, I'm pretty happy with Croker, I knew he would bounce back, and yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully Croker can keep it up, kick goals, get a couple of tries now and then, and, you know, average around 60, 70 would be nice, uh, Tedesco, 113, Killed it. <clears throat> Again, I was so close to picking Tedesco's captain because I knew he had to turn it around. But again, I didn't go with it. I went for a safe option, which bit me in the ass. But, you know, uh, Damian Cook, 81 points. Just an absolute gun. Uh, Leggy Sow, 46 again. Just uh, absolutely killing it, Leggy Sow. Um, again, he wasn't on my reserves, but he's going to get a nice increase. Uh, Mark Nichols, 14, you know, whatever, he's a cheapie, Bryce Cartwright, 36, he was playing halfback for the Titans, which, my god, I, I don't know why, surely they have some, like, reserve grade player that could have played halfback, but, yeah, he got 36, which is okay, um, yeah, I don't know, Cartwright, I, I feel like when he gets, like, a couple of price increases, I'm just gonna get rid of him, because he just, like, on Super Coach, he might score okay, but like playing like in real life, he looks, he doesn't look good at all. And I wouldn't be surprised if he gets dropped um, from the team. Uh, Isaiah Papali, unfortunately got injured and he's going to be out for like eight weeks or something. Um, thankfully, I didn't put him on my reserves because I was very tempted to, but I didn't. And... He scored four points, but I'm probably going to have to get rid of him, which is a shame. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. Uh, kick out 29, again, decent. Lachlan Croker, cheapy, 72, very good. Uh, Cody Walker, 59. Again, pretty happy with that. And then we have Zarko, 30. Dewahi, 35. And the other reserve, Tom Trebojevic, again, just killing it, 95. I don't even think Trebojevic got a try in this. Um, but still 95 points, just unbelievable. Uh, so let's look at the team because there's quite, I just wish, I wish I could have three trades this week. I need three trades because <clears throat> what I need is I need to get Pengai Jr. into the team. So what I'm thinking, there's a couple of options because I think at the moment, as you see here, I've got 109k uh, saved up, so if I look, um, so yeah, if I'm going to trade Isaiah Papali out, he's 225k, um, where is, so Tavita Pengai, I, I just can't get Tavita Pengai, he's 3k, or 3, 3.3k more expensive, so, that's annoying. I wish I could just trade Isaiah Papali straight for Pengai Jr. I can't believe I'm that close because that would be just a, a definite trade. I would 100% do that. That is that is a sure thing. Pengai Jr. is a monster and Papali is going to be out for like eight weeks. But the other thing I'm thinking is Moses. Now, what what do I do with Moses? As you see here, I've I've switched these two around. I'm not going to play Lock on Croker, but I was thinking about potentially upgrading Moses to Johnson, um, or or something like that. Because what I could potentially do is like, I think I could like trade like Papali for someone like really cheap for like 160k and then potentially get enough money for Moses to Johnson. But I honestly, I feel like I'm just going to bite the bullet. I feel like I'm going to bite the bullet and just keep Moses. He's going to leak 
like a lot of money, but I still, in the back of my head, I'm like, the Eels are going to turn it around. I don't see the Eels playing that terribly for the rest of the year. And I'm just hoping Moses can pick it up because it's a tough one. Because, I mean, to get Johnson, I'd have to do like a... Yeah, I don't even know if it's really possible. I could probably trade out like, you know, one of my better players for someone cheaper. But I don't want to do that because the rest of my players are pretty good. Actually, no, the other... This is what I was thinking. I was thinking trade Latrell Mitchell out for someone cheaper because <clears throat> Mitchell's been awful. So let's have a look. So, I mean, if we look here, some of the highest scorers, Corey Thompson. I'm not going to get Corey Thompson. I, I, I think that's a, that's a trap. He's playing really well, but I don't think it's going to keep up. Uh, Blake Ferguson has been sensational. Um, I'm half tempted because... I mean, Latrell Mitchell, what was he? He's 483, so I mean, I could get like a fair bit of cash for getting Ferguson. Ryan Madison has looked pretty good. Um, who else? Um, there's no one really knocking the door down. I mean, Rapana, obviously I can't get Rapana, but there are any, I mean, potential one here with Philip Sammy, who is 234. And that would free up so much money, but again, I I don't I don't know. I don't know. This this is this is a tough one, because again, I'm sort of yeah I, I'm I'm in two minds because of uh what's it called bloody what am I talking about. I'm just having a look for a second here. I'd love to get Nofaluma, but that's probably not going to happen. Um, but yeah, I'm in two minds because, again, Mitchell Mitchell from the start of the year, I always thought he would be a risk because he's going to have games where he scores not great, but then games where he's going to score hundreds. So I don't know. I, I feel like I, I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to keep Mitchell Moses. It could It could keep screwing me over, but we'll see. I'm definitely going to be trading Papali up for Tavita Pangai. The only two decisions, are, yeah, the only two decisions I have to make is do I trade like Mark Nichols for, like I I, I could trade Mark Nichols um, for, I can actually get, I, I think, I think Kalepi Tanganoa, wherever he is. Yeah, there I could get Kalepi Tanganoa, who um who was like twenty K cheaper, and he's actually looked really good. Um you know, getting 30, 40 points. So I could trade Nichols for Tanganoa and then upgrade Papali for Tavita Pangai, which is I think that might be the thing I'm going to do. But the other thing is that I might trade out Mitchell for a cheaper center. And then trade Papali up for Pangai Jr. They're the two decisions I have to make. And I don't know. I'm torn. I'm torn. But uh, other than that, my team is looking pretty solid. I'm happy with it. So, yeah. Other than that, hopefully you guys are enjoying the series. Uh, make sure to like. And I will see you in the next one.